Oh, howdy all. Grab yourselves a beer. It is time for some Path of Exile discussion, and today I wanted to talk about bound fossils. Bound fossils and how to use them. Now, bound fossils are on their own, i.e. in a one-socket resonator. They function as a chaos orb or an alchemy orb that is biased. And what that means is that it is more likely to roll minion and aura-related mods, and in addition, it adds a number of new minion or aura-themed mods into the pool of what can roll. But fundamentally, it scrambles the mods on the item, so just like a Chaos Orb, uh, but biases them towards these rolls. Now these can be combined with other fossils, both to increase the chances of desirable combinations of mods and to eliminate undesired rolls. But what I want to do is go through in depth what they do and how you can use them, what items you should consider using them on. So firstly, so we're saying they add a suite of new aura mods and minion mods, and I'm going to go through every mod that they can add. These are all listed on the Path of Exile wiki, and they're also listed on PoEDB, which is a data mined information site. Uh, I'll put links to both of those in the video description. Uh, and in addition, they bias towards aura and minion mods. Now, there's a lot of speculation, and I can't verify this source, but uh, Path of Exile Wiki states that using this fossil multiplies the spawn weights of all modifiers with minion tags by 10, and also with aura tags by 10. So I can't vouch for this being correct, uh, but I'm just going to accept that it is. Now this applies both to good minion rolls, so for example, plus 3 to the level of socketed minion gems is a very good minion roll that appears on item level 86 and above helmets. Uh, but it also applies to undesired minion and aura rolls, such as the plus one version of the aforementioned plus three to socketed minion gems roll, which is generally an undesirable roll. I mean, you'll use it while you're leveling, but uh, it's not something that you're particularly keen to get. Now, just a quick thing on the maths of it. Ten times the waiting is not ten times the probability, but it is close to it for low probability events. So if you've got a 1% chance to hit a desired roll, uh, you can see that as being one chance to hit and 99 to miss. What this does is it takes it to 10 chances to hit and 99 to miss, uh, which is 10 in 109 chance to hit your desired roll, which is approximately 9.2%. So you see it's, it's not quite 10 times, but it's pretty close. But if your chance to hit is 10%, so you've got 10 chances to hit and 90 to miss, this becomes 100 to hit and 90 to miss, which is about 53%. Or if you've got a 70% chance to hit, you go from 70 in 100 to 700 in 730, which is about 96%, which is nowhere near 10 times 70%. So keep that in mind. I like to think of it as, imagine you're entering a raffle and you have a choice between buying one ticket and buying 10 tickets. If 20 other people have bought raffle tickets, uh, when you buy one ticket, you've got a 1 in 21 chance of winning first prize. If you buy 10, you have a 10 in 30 chance because you're actually diluting the odds of any individual ticket winning by purchasing more of them. And so that's something bound fossils do. One other thing that they, that's important, bound fossils, unlike I believe every other fossil that, ma uh, that biases roles, does not eliminate any roles, nor does it make anything less likely to roll. Uh, so it well, except by the fact that the bound fossil mods, uh, the, mo the minion mods now crowd out some of the space for the others. But it doesn't outright eliminate rolls the way that, for instance, a frigid fossil makes it impossible to roll any fire mods on the item. So none of that happens. Now let's have a quick look through the unique modifiers, the ones that you can only get through using a bound fossil, potentially in conjunction with other fossils, but possibly on its own as well. So first up, we have the aura suffix. Uh, we have the uh, aura suffix that is available on weapons. So what this does is it grants auras from your skills grant two percent increased damage to you and to your allies. This is a pretty niche mod. It's pretty low powered, and it's four percent if it's on a two hander as well. Uh, this is a pretty niche mod. It's not very powerful, but on an aura bot that has ten or more auras active. It's somewhat meaningful to add 20% increased damage on, on a one-hander, 40% on a two-hander, but generally speaking, aura support characters will be using the Prism Guardian shield in their offhand, and as a result will not be able to, uh, will not have any position, not have any capability to use the two-handed version of this. 
so ultimately, I think this is a pretty undesirable roll. It's not something. It's something that you'll usually want to roll over. Uh, but if if you need it yourself because you're playing an an aura support character, then by all means consider it. There is, however, a sort of special case interaction where this can be a little bit better, uh, and that is if you're wanting to, if you're playing a minion and or a hybrid build, uh, like a lot of necromancer builds can be, then you can get a fair bit of benefit from having, uh, from using this in conjunction with a glyphic fossil. Glyphic fossils are very rare and they add a corrupt essence modifier to an item. Uh, the combination of Glyphic and Bound Fossils together heavily bias in favour of rolling the uh, uh, rolling the Essence of Insanity mod, which is uh, socketed when socketed weapon is equipped, you car you have level twenty uh, summon Spectral Wolves, and those Spectral Wolves will then get all of your auras and get a little extra bonus from this as well. So that's the one niche use case for this mod. But bo broadly speaking, I think it's a pretty weak mod. Next up we have the uh, weapon prefix for minions, and this is really, really strong. Uh, this has two particular uses, and I'll just notice, uh, note here that there are four tiers of this mod. So if you're using a one-handed weapon, tier 1, 30 to 44%, tier 2, 45 to, 40, uh, to 59, tier 3, 60 to 74, and tier 4, which is the top tier, uh, 75 to 80%. Now, one thing that's important, if you have a look at the spawn weightings that are listed here, and these are data mined from the game files, you'll see that on a one-handed weapon, you have 2,000 for tiers 1 and 2, and only 1,000 for tier 3, only 500 for tier 4. That means that if you roll this mod, uh, you are more it is biased towards getting the weaker tiers, because you won't see the stronger tiers very often. Uh, and that's important because of one of the niche use cases of this. Now, there are two ways that you can use this mod. The first is the obvious one, and that is to boost the damage that minions that you summon do. This isn't very good with Herald of Agony due to its scaling, but for most minions, most other minion skills, such as summon skeletons, this is really, really strong. Uh, and it's something you may wish to consider using. However, there is a second use case for this that is really important, and that is in conjunction with the spiritual aid, uh, spiritual aid uh, special passive tree node. Now, what this does is it causes the player to be affected by increases and reductions to minion damage. And this is something that's found uh, over in the Templar section of the tree. It was added back when Herald of Purity and Herald of Agony were added to the game, uh, but mostly with the intention of being used uh, in 3.4.5, was used in conjunction with the uh, Herald of Purity gem. That was the thematic idea. However, the key use for Spiritual Aid, uh, and something that it does that's really special, is it provides a way to amp up the damage caused by Herald of Ice and Herald of Thunder. These are two very powerful skills that are very, 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 very hard to scale normally. And this allows you to get a massive uh, 75 to 80% increased Herald of Ice damage on a one-handed weapon. This is an incredible, incredible roll uh, and is actually the most powerful use case of bound fossils on weapons. Uh, one quick point to make here is that this has higher roll numbers for two-handers, but you are better off using two one-handers here. Uh, you'll see that, let's assume you're trying to boost Herald of Ice, you get 75 to 80% on each of two weapons, that's, 100 uh, that's 150 to 160%, biased towards 155. Contrast this to if you get the single top-tier roll on a two-hander, uh, you're only getting 111 to 130. In fact, you would be better off with two of the second-tier roll, uh, on one on each of your, your one-handed weapons than to have one of the top tier roll on a two-hander and the two-hander roll, top tier roll, is pretty rare. Now, the best case scenario for this, uh, for this uh, configuration, is to get a Val Ice Nova weapon that has been crafted with a Bloodstained and a Bound Fossil and that picks up a high tier of this roll. That'll be an absolutely incredible item because your 
Herald of Ice at Chain Reactions will deal considerably more damage. Your Val Ice Nova itself will get the bonus from this uh, minion buff. And so you'll be able to do an enormous amount of additional damage uh, with this with this configuration. Uh, but Bloodstained Fossils are extremely rare, and most of the time you will not be rolling these juicy top two tiers. You will be instead getting the mediocre lower tiers or not, not rolling this roll at all. So that's an expensive project you might want to take on if you're looking for something to spend currency on, uh, but otherwise it's not something you're that likely to hit. Now let's talk about the Gloves Prefix. Uh, the Gloves Prefix adds 20 to 30% minion damage onto a slot that doesn't normally roll it. Uh, the problem is that 20 to 30% just isn't very much. I'm not really, not really high on this roll. I don't think it's great. Uh, it's something, yeah, by all means, use it if you if you really want to. But um, I think you'll find it's it's just a pretty disappointing roll in general. So I wouldn't be rolling uh, I wouldn't be rolling bound fossils onto gloves. Now we have the quiver ring and amulet move speed roll. Uh, so this is here. It's only available on item level 74 and higher. So that uh, this number here is the minim is the item level that's required for th for these mods to appear, and 15 to 30 percent increased movement speed for minions is really really strong. However, you can do better than this already with a deafening essence of fear. Deafening essence of fear will provide you 27 to 30 percent. So it's in the same in the same region, but it's biased higher, uh, and so you're much more likely to get a good roll with the Deafening Essence of Fear. Uh, this is a really solid role for most minion builds. It's deceptive how much time minions spend walking around rather than attacking. Uh, and this fixes that for you, especially if you can get it on a lot of slots. What I would suggest you do here is craft your basic gear by using bound fossils uh, when you know when you get early when you just get into maps, uh, if you're playing a minion build, uh, throw bound fossils onto these items till you get a reasonable a reasonable amount of minion movement speed. But then later on, don't look to use this to craft your forever gear on your character. And this will be stepping stone gear, nothing more than that. Uh, next up, we have the very disappointing minion maximum life roll that is on body armors, shields, and belts. Uh, minion, minion maximum life is okay. Uh, it is extraordinary on one specific use case, which is the which is minion instability builds, uh, where that considerably adds to the damage output of your character. But for general cases, uh, you probably don't want to you you probably don't want this roll. And so that means you will not be using uh, uh, you will not be using bound fossils on shields or belts most of the time unless you fit that niche use case of a minion instability build. Body armor we'll come back to later because there's something else that can roll there, and that something else is very very good. And I am leaving the good rolls to last. Well, actually, I'm just going down from top to bottom, but um, the good rolls happen to be at the end. Uh, next up, we have the spectre roll on boots. This is potentially very powerful, but it's also very niche. If you're not a Spectre build, if you're playing any sort of other minion character, uh, then you gain basically nothing, or well, you gain absolutely nothing from this. But if you're a Spectre build, uh, you pretty much, this is so strong that you probably should not consider any boots that don't have them. The other thing that's quite good here is that movement speed being the best defense in the game, you are probably going to want 35% movement speed on any set of boots that you use at the very end game, and 30% for most of your time in maps at least, uh, until you can source a 35% set. Uh, because bound fossils are so cheap, you don't even need to go to the expense of using shuddering fossils. You can just keep spamming an item with bound fossils until you get this and the top tier of movement speed that is available at your current character level. So that's something that is uh, potentially really good. It's also really easy to roll this. Uh, you know, 2000s are pretty high weighting. You'll get this really fast, and it will serve you well if you need it. If you're not a Spectre character, then don't consider using Bound Fossils on boots because they will do nothing for you. They will just result in you often rolling a completely useless suffix that could have been a good resist for your build. Now next up we have the big 
chest mod. This is a really deceptively powerful mod. Uh, what we're talking here is a 20 to 25 percent increased effect of auras on you. Now this affects auras that you receive from other players and it affects things that are coded as auras that don't feel like auras to you. So if you're playing with an aura support what this is going to give you is at least 1% to all maximum resistances, about 100 energy shield, 6% of physical damage as added cold, 4% more cold damage, 4 to 60 lightning damage on all attacks, 5% more lightning damage to spells, 27 to 38 additional fire damage to attacks, and 25, oh, sorry, 24 to 35 fire to spells. And this is all based upon the assumption that your aura support character is using level 20 auras without without any real boosting up of those auras. If they can get their hands on uh, level 21 or level 21 aura gems and put them into something like a Prism Guardian that gives plus or Alpha's Howl that gives plus two, or potentially even something that, that's corrupted to give more than plus two, uh, these numbers are going to get higher and higher and higher. And these numbers go up, up, up even more if you have something like a Mana Guardian's buffs that provide tremendous amounts of additional uh, energy shield and uh, pr tremendous amounts of additional energy shield to your character. That doesn't feel like an aura because it's not something you can turn off and turn on, uh, but it is one. Now the twenty-five percent, the twenty to twenty-five percent here uh, on this mod it does not stack. Oh, like the way that it stacks is that it is basically treated as the source of the aura. So if this is an aura bot that you're playing with, uh, it's like that player had an extra, say, 23% uh, aura effect. So if they've got 100% baseline aura effect and then 55% from other sources, so 155% of base effect, and you've got 23 on this mod, then it jumps up to 178% of base. So it's not multiplicative, but it's still very powerful. It's worth saying that this is the best defensive suffix for energy shield chess, uh, and it is better even than some legacy suffixes like the Delve plus up to 50% increased energy shield, as long as you are using discipline, or as long as you're, you're generally under the effect of discipline. Uh, it also scales up haste and vile haste, which is amazing. Headhunter has a number of synergies too. Uh, if you can steal the haste aura from, from an enemy, uh, this will give you 25% increased effect of that, or you know, 20 to 25, but let's, sh you're probably going to want to divine this to 25 in most cases. Uh, and so it's going to be very, very powerful. Now, a couple of things you should know about this. Firstly, uh, this is a hypothesis, but it's something that I believe is a pretty supported one. I believe that this is very hard to roll when you are using a sanctified fossil on your chest. Uh, the reason for that while this is a very desired role, it is item level 1 requirement. Sanctified fossils make higher tier roles more common. Now, it's not explicitly... It, there's no information out in the uh, amongst the player base as to exactly how this works, but it is my hypothesis that this makes lower tier roles considerably less likely to come up. And this is, although this is a very powerful mod, it is considered to be a very low tier role. And so for that reason, I would encourage you, you to not use Sanctified Fossils in conjunction with Bound Fossils on chess, unless you have a very compelling other reason to do so. Uh, and so for instance, using it, Dense Fossils are the ones that work best with Sanctified Fossils. Uh, and so in that case, you might just say, okay, I'm, I have three energy shield roles that I really want to be biased towards high towards high numbers, I'm going to put up with the um, put up with the fact that I'm going to get screwed on this bound roll. The other thing is that Sanctified Fossils also make this more common because it's an item level 74 mod, and so therefore it comes up, uh, it, it will be deemed to be a desirable mod by a Sanctified Fossil, whereas in fact it's a pretty undesirable mod for most people. And unfortunately, I know no way to block this role when you're using Bound Fossils. Uh, I've done a little bit of searching on it. It's not tagged as a life mod, uh, unfortunately, even though it does, it does modify the, uh, modifies life in a way. 
Uh, it's not tagged as a life roll, so you can't crush it with dense fossils. And for that matter, you may not want to do that anyway. So that's unfortunate. Now we have, I'm going to come back to the helmet roll in a second because it's another, it's another really good one. We have the possibility of using them on jewels. Uh, Abyss jewels can get minions deal 14 to 16% increased damage. Uh, this is a pretty solid roll and so there is nothing wrong at all with rolling your uh, ghastly eye jewels, which are the minion themed ones uh, with bound fossils. However, expect to be doing a lot of rolling there because there, quite simply, there's a lot of undesirable rolls that come up on uh, on Ghastly Eye Jewels. Generally speaking, low, uh, anything that adds physical damage to minions is mostly garbage because the numbers are too low. Anything that adds chaos damage to minions is generally too low to be useful. So you're needing to be adding elemental damage. You need to hit a useful elemental damage. And you also want to have some sort of defense on the jewel as well. It's a prefix which clashes with uh, life and, and energy shield. So again, it's not an amazing roll, but it is an option you can use. And of course, bound fossils are generally very, very cheap in leagues. Uh, most of the time they're available in large bulk at one to one and a half chaos per unit. Next up, we have typical jewels. Uh, here, there's a bit more going for using your uh, using your bound fossils on them. Uh, firstly, it's a suffix, uh, which means that it doesn't clash with the vivid roll, which is the life roll, which is of course one of the best things you can get on a jewel. And minion attack speed is very strong, uh, or minion cast speed at uh, whichever you need. And so, as a result, I think this is something you can seriously consider using on jewels and getting something for it. Next up we have the helmet. Now reduced reservations. It seems so small doesn't it? 5 to 4 percent reduced mana reserved. That doesn't sound like a lot and to be honest for a lot of builds it's pretty underwhelming but it is deceptively powerful. Firstly using bound fossils on helmets is already pretty good because there's just so many good uh, roles available for min uh, for elder helmets that are minion themed, and so adding more uh, making and these are also are things that you want to get together. So the first one is plus levels to socketed minion gems. This is a pretty common role with a uh, weighting of one thousand baseline and ten thousand when used in conjunction with a bound fossil. And whilst Reanimators is bad and Summoners is mediocre, the Necromancer's role is incredibly strong. Next up you have Minions, de uh, minions deal increased damage and Socketed Gems are supported by level 20 minion damage or potentially one of the lower tiers. This is just amazing. This is a massive more multiplier to the damage of your gem. Uh, in addition to the de facto more multiplier of having Necromancers on it. And then you've also got this uh, minions have percentage increased maximum life and are supported by minion life for even more damage. Oh, sorry, for even more durability on your minions, which doesn't help all minions, doesn't help Herald of Agony, but it does help most of them. So Elder Helmets can roll really good minion rolls already. And then we get this extra mod, Reduce Reservation 4 to 5%. Now, Reduce Reservation in general has escalating returns. What I mean by this is that once you start getting more of it, every further point that you can get gives you a larger benefit than the first points did. So assume that you want 10% of your mana unreserved. If you have zero in this stat, you can use 100% worth of auras. Uh, sorry, you can use 90% worth of auras. And that will take up 90% of your mana. Now, there are some rounding issues with this, so it may not be exactly right, but uh, generally speaking, use 100% worth of auras and you'll have 10% of your mana left over, so you get 90%. With 40% of reduced reservation, you can use 150% of your mana worth of auras and still have 10% uh, left over. Now with 70%, which is only a 30% increase on the 40%, you can use 300% worth of auras. So that final 30% going from 40 to 70% had two and a half times the benefit that going from zero to 40% had, even though 30% obviously is less than 40%. Uh, escalating returns. 
And this continues. 80% allows 450% of your mana to be reserved and still ha still giving you 10% to use. 85% allows 600%. Now, so what this means is that this stat is extremely valuable uh, to people that already have a lot of it. And I will just say as a quick editorial note that I think that this stat should be changed to work better in small amounts and to be weaker in large amounts uh, by being changed to something like you can reserve 5-7% to of your mana for free, but that hasn't happened and there's been no talk of it happening, so I'm just going to uh, comment on the game as it currently is. So for that reason, uh, the helmet mana reservation node is extremely strong. Uh, both for builds that are looking to stack mana reservation uh, reduction and also sometimes just for builds that are having mana problems somewhere. I believe it. this is one of the two strongest nodes, uh, sorry, one of the two strongest mods that you can roll with Bound Fossils. The other one being, of course, the Aura Effect node that we were talking about before. And those two work very well together. Now, that's all of the unique Bound Fossil only mods have a quick discussion of biasing towards minion rolls. So we mentioned that any any min, uh, any minion roll, i.e. anything with the minion tag into inside the game files, uh, is ten times as likely to roll if you have a uh, if you ha if you're using a bound fossil. And we gave as one example is necromancers, and another example is this. Eldritch role here, which is uh, minion, socket of gems as supported by level 20 minion damage. Well, I went through all of the different uh, item slots so that you don't have to, uh, except for jewels. I, di I didn't touch jewels at this point. And the roles that I feel are of note. The first one is Shaper item level 82 plus amulets. So let's just bring up in PODB, go to, uh, go to jewelry amulets. And we'll click Bound Fossil here, which will then highlight the very small number of mods that come up that get that get a biasing towards them from the Bound Fossil. And you'll see here, 3 to 5% reduced mana reserved is a Shaper mod that has minimum level 82, and that has a weighting of 800, so it's not particularly rare. Uh, generally speaking, 1000 is the default, and uh, then things that are legitimately rare tend to be things uh, tend to be around 100 or 50 or something like that 800 is also pretty common on a lot of um, on a lot of shaper mods so you see here as we flick through most of these are 400 uh, but some of the, some of them are different amounts in any case that's a powerful mod and it's something that you can bias towards with bound fossils and this may come in handy if you're trying to roll specific combinations of mods. So for instance, uh, leave aside that there's not much synergy between these mods, but if you wanted to get this uh, 7 to 10% chance to get a random charge on kill in conjunction with reduced mana reservation, uh, then that would become 10 times easier as well when you've got a bound fossil. So very, very useful uh, potential there. The other thing that comes up is... Elder Amulets. These only need to be level 68, so any Elder Amulet at all will do, uh, except maybe for ones that are c created through unusual use of divination cards. And this is not a particularly rare role. Raise Zombies or Raise Skeletons increases the maximum number. Uh, all of that, that's very niche, but if you're one of those players that has a use for those mods, then you're more likely to get them if you are throwing Bound Fossils at them. And that's basically it in terms of biasing towards, uh, in terms of minion gems and aura gems that you can bias towards. Uh, there's basically almost nothing else that you can um, take advantage of the 10 times a chance to hit with, uh, with the bound fossils. So Shaper 82 plus amulets, Elder 68 plus amulets, and helmets are the things that you want to use. So in conclusion, what are the best things to craft with bound fossils? Firstly, it is chest armors for characters that are expecting to be running with any sort of aura support character. Uh, absolutely incredible there. Uh, you will gain an enormous amount from you gain an absolutely enormous amount from that powerful mod. This is best done without sanctified fossils, even though sanctified fossils may make it easier to roll the other desired mods that you're chasing on that on that chest piece. 
Secondly, it is helmets for... Uh, it is item level 86 helmets uh, that are elder helmets. These roll really well with bound fossils. My default is that, uh, you may have seen, I've cre created a video earlier on throwing enchanted fossils on a bunch of items, uh, and they were 86. They were item level 86 uh, elder helmets. There are quite a number of enchant... Uh, there are quite a number of enchants that are minion related, and if I hit one of those, then I start spamming the item with bound fossils until I have a serviceable or even very, very, very strong helmet for someone, uh, and then I look to sell them. That's something I've done a few times in a few leagues, and there's always someone, you know, you hit a good, you hit a good animate weapon roll, and even though animate weapon is as off-meta a skill as you can get, there are people that love to play it, uh, and it still works, and so they're really ecstatic to get a plus three socketed minion gems, minion gems is, uh, minion gems are supported by level 18 minion damage, and two other okay rolls on it. That also has the that also has their desired enchant on it. Like that's going to be for most of them the best helmet they'll be able to get all league. So that's one thing that I often do with my uh, bound fossils. Otherwise, you can always work on crafting the uh, reduced reservation stuff uh, because that has its definite uses for aura characters. And if you're feeling particularly rich and you're willing to try to make a Bloodstained Fossil Val Ice Nova Spiritual Aid build, then best of luck with that. Have you got any questions about Bound Fossils? Uh, fire away below. If you've got any recommendations for the next fossil to go into depth, into in-depth discussion of, also fire away below. Otherwise, hope you have a good one.